The Wrestling Ball, Coach Hancock here and Coach Boudreaux here with Derek Snyder from Brownsburg, Indiana. Derek uh, has his Brownsburg team ranked in the top 20 in the country. Uh, spent quite a bit of time at Mishawaka, building them up into national powers um, and absolutely has built uh, Brownsburg from the ground up into national powers. Derek, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, talk to us and give our listeners a little bit of a, uh, an insight to um, where you started uh, your wrestling career and, and your college career and how you ended up at uh, Brownsburg. Uh, yeah, so I, I actually wrestled at uh, Mishawaka and, uh, you know, not a not a stellar career. I placed once, uh, uh, then went on and wrestled uh, Division III um, for four years at North Central College in Naperville, Illinois. I loved it, but uh, I had a brother that was a year older than me. You know him. He was the two-time state champ, the Fargo national champ, the D1 wrestler. And I just loved the sport, um, but wasn't, uh, wasn't real athletic. You know, I, I started in football like one year. And was like third team all conference. My brother broke the school rushing record. <laughs> so, uh, he didn't leave me with a lot of athletic ability. So I tell the guys, I hope I'm a much better coach than I was a wrestler. But uh, anyway, then went back to, to Mishawaka. I was an assistant for a few years. I graduated from college in, in 2000 and took over after a few years. And it was, you know, rough the first couple of years, but kind of got that program, um, you know, back on the rise and, we're able to, and and we were close. 2006, we were close. 2007, 2008, finally uh, won our first state title. Did it again in 2010, um, and then I came to Brownsburg, and it, it was it was it was rough, man. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, the year before I got here, we were ninth in the conference. Then we did seventh. Then it was fifth. And then I had a wave coming up. I knew I had some good middle school dudes. And, you know, I just got lucky. Brayton Lee lived down the street from Brownsburg High School. Uh -huh. uh, when I got here, I spent a year and a half recruiting him to stay in the school system. That was two minutes from his house. Uh, mm -hmm. Keeping him was huge. It, it got us other guys. And, you know, a kid like Blake Mulkey that just all American at uh, Marion University was a three-time placer for us. I mean, he didn't even start really wrestling until middle school, but he was just best friends with Brayton. Um, so that was a game changer. And we got those guys. And that's when we kind of started to, not at a national level, but um, Brayton's freshman year, we won conference, which was a big deal. Our conference is pretty tough. And then sophomore year, like all of a sudden, we, you know, we go into dual state. And, and Indiana's, everything we do is backwards. So we have... <laughs> We switch back and individual state at the end of the year determines the official state champs. And we do a dual state in the middle of the year. So I think it was Brayton's sophomore year. Uh, we got seated second. A lot of people are roasting us on the message boards. We're not that good. And we went in and I don't know how we did it. Um, I knew we'd make the finals or I was confident we would. And we beat a Warren team that had like nine dudes that um, had wrestled at state. And I think they were like 25th in the country. I mean, honestly, we wrestled that duel 10 times. We lose nine of them. Uh, but that day we got it done. We got second that year at IHSA State. Warren beat us. And then things have gone well. They finally won an IHSA title. We won four dual state titles. But last couple of years, we've been close, no cigar. I mean, last year at dual state, we had a 20 three to nine lead on modern day. I've never had the wheels come off so fast, man. Like we, we were getting pins. We won bonus. I'm like, here we go. And then it was a train wreck. So uh, close, but no cigar. So yeah, we're, uh, we're hoping this year, you know, to win an IHSA and a dual state title. But as you guys know, man, it, it's not easy. You got to stay healthy, stay out of trouble. And, and then you got to wrestle well that day. Well, you've built uh, two programs, obviously, international powers. Talk a little bit about what it took, um, how your youth club, your middle school club, and your high school club is sort of structured, um, and, and what it took to, to get to that level. Yeah, I think the first thing is getting everyone on the same page. Um, and, and I'm not trying to knock the staff before me here, but one thing was they – it was like a bunch of different programs. You had your club, and somebody's doing that – and middle school's kind of doing their own thing. And then you got the high school program. And, and so the first thing I did, um, and I did it at Mishawaka too, is I, we're all on the same team and there's a pecking order. You know, you, you start with club, then middle school takes priority. And then your high school. I mean, they, when I got here, they're fighting about whether these sixth graders, because we go sixth, seventh and eighth grade should go with the elementary team here, or the middle school. And I, and I just got to cut that out. So I think getting everyone on the same page, um, 
And then, you know, I tell the guys like we have, you know, I'm sure I'm, I'm assuming you guys too, too, but I tell the guys, we're going to drill to the same stuff every single day I'm alive from the time you're five years old until you graduate today at practice, we will run singles and double leg takedowns and snap downs and stand ups. And I tell you guys, what do you think the football team's doing? You think they're running a bunch of plays. They're not going to run for They're doing the same thing over and over again. You just get better at it. Um, so I think getting that system in uh, when I got here, they were a big uh, like Greco team. Uh, I, I don't, we don't throw a whole lot at all. I mean, we got a couple of tricks in our, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, a high percentage offense. So we started to thank God I don't do it anymore, but I did like our like peewee group, like five and six year olds, just teaching them like our system. Um, and then we have like our elite club group, teach them that. And it's the same system. You just get better at it. Uh, I think surrounding yourself with great coaches. I mean, I, it, honestly, here it's so much easier, and I loved Mishawaka. Um, it'll always be home to me, and I, I still root for them. There's more money here, and my administrative support here is stupid. I mean, I, Kyle Ayersman is on my staff. The dude lost two matches in high school and wrestled at Purdue. He's my, one of my assistants. Brian Smiley was a state champ, a four-year starter at IU. He's on my staff. I mean, I didn't have a single coach in the corporation at Mishawaka ever while I was there. And I've got three here. Both my middle school coaches are in the building, both great guys. So I think surrounding yourself with great coaches um, is huge. We, you know, we, we picked up Mike Morgan this year from Warren Central. He had 50 offers and we were able to pull him in because I use my assistants. You know, you, you give him a role and make him feel valued. And all of a sudden, I, you know, I think we've got one of the best coaching staffs uh, that you could possibly have. So uh, that's my long-winded way of saying you can't do it on your own, man. You got to get everybody on the same page. You got to surround yourself with uh, great coaches. And then you got to make it cool. You know, we had our duel last night. We, we had spotlights. We had a DJ. They walked, you know, down the stadium stairs to their own song, which they all picked rap songs with little baby, <laughs> little something. You know, we, we got a smoke machine. I tried to do that. Uh, we call it the pyrotechnics or whatever. I got that. <laughs> Yeah, I got that veto. They said we, our insurance wouldn't cover it. Um, but when I got here, they were wrestling their dual meets. It was like Saved by the Bell. They were in this like little gym. And I told my AD, like, <laughs> I can't make wrestling cool. I can't wrestle in here. So I said, just give me the dates, the big gyms available, and I'll find somebody to wrestle. So, you know, little things like that make a difference, man. With first fundraiser, I spent like $1,000 on T-shirts and just gave them away. I just wanted to see people wearing Brownsburg wrestling stuff. And I think if you do that, then you start getting some kids, you know, we had a youth night last night, you know, I, those kids, I don't want them walking in the gym and it being boring. I mean, they were jacked up and I got some eighth graders like you know, Parker Reynolds. I don't know what he is, six in the country in middle school. He's like, coach, I can't wait to be out there next year. I'm like, dude, I can't wait for you to be out there next year. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think, and then I, I would say the last, you got to put your time in, man. Um, you know, I tell my my assistants and my wrestlers, like, I don't want to be here all off season either. I don't want to get up at six o'clock and drive three hours away on a Saturday, but I don't know how else to do it. I don't want to lose. So you got to put your time in, man. And we grind all off season, all summer. We head to the Disney duels. We start our preseason. Um, but that's the only way I know how to win, you know, so. Can you uh, just go into depth a little bit about what your practice looks like, just structure wise? I know you say you got a lot of different different levels. Um, you guys all practice in at once. You run in multiple practices, and mainly at the high school level. Yeah, high school. We uh, a couple. Of, uh, it's probably been about four years ago. We've got a, a beautiful new room. I mean, it was new construction added onto the school. It's you know the mats are fitted wall to wall, so we do it all together um, because we have the space. Um, and our numbers that, you know, I, I really thought when I got here at school this big, I mean, we're like maybe the 15th biggest school in Indiana. I thought we 80, hundred guys and we kind of went from 25 to 50 and we're right around 50, 55 every year. Um, and my superintendent teases me about that. Cause I told him I have a hundred and, uh, I said, has the quality improved? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. So we run it together. Um, and then a, a typical practice for us and, and I try to pride myself on being uh, kind of flexible and again, using my assistance. So, but a typical practice, you know, we bring them in, we go over announcements, we got stupid pictures tomorrow, what time to be here Saturday. Um, then we warm them up um, and we've got, you know, four high level coaches. So the warm ups jogging around the map, but 
all of us do it different, you know. And, and when I was at Mishawaka, I showed virtually every move. I ran the warm ups. I did everything. And I honestly, I was getting burned out. Um, and it, you need a little routine. So we warm up, but one of us will do it every day and we kind of rotate it. Um, and it breaks up the monotony because we all do it a little bit different. Once we warm them up, we bring them in um, and we show technique. Um, like last night, Westfield's just hanging on wrists and rushing ties. And it was like, we've never gone over that. So we'll bring them in and we're going to talk about when a guy's like hanging on you, trying to slow you down, what do you do? And we call that like our slow pace drilling. It's something new or something they're not doing well. They'll go drill it. We'll bring him in, you know, three, four times to show them something. And then I always say we're going to pick up the pace. And a lot of times we'll tell them, like, all right, man, like, slow stuff's done. Like, take a walk. And we have them walk down and back. Like, get your mind right. Like, it's we're going. If I'm doing the technique, um, I'm pretty big on, especially once the year gets going, or not the, the drilling, I, I like them to hit their number one takedown, number two takedown, number three takedown. Then we do, like, you know, a, a misdirection, a snap and score. Um, smiley, uh, he one, he's insane. I literally just write down smiley drill and I don't know. He just comes up with it, man. It's like situations and, and it's good. Um, that's, we never did anything like that at Mr. Walker, but on our practice plan after technique today, I'm just letting smiley run the drilling. Um, and it's just like in and out of situations, you know, like, okay, you're going to take him feet to back. He's going to bridge up. Then you're going to take him down and just going, but it's, it's, it's fast paced. And I tell him, I, I don't want to see you playing with your shoelaces. We're not playing with their knee pads. The locker room door is locked. I don't care if you got to pee. I don't, doesn't matter. Like go. And so, uh, that's anywhere from 20 to 45 minutes, just depending on the day. Um, then after that, uh, we get into our live and just like everybody, you know, sometimes it's matches, sometimes it's groups. Today, we're going to do situations, things we didn't do well last night. Um, and then we like to stop them. And we'll do, we got a big room, add some sprints, um, some just put them, make them uncomfortable. I said, like, we're going to get uncomfortable, then we're going to go wrestle again. Um, and then we, once or twice a week, like today, they made me mad last night because they looked tired. So we're going to start on the track and we do 10 time sprints. And I mean, they got a haul. And if you don't make it, it doesn't count. So that's what we'll start with today. We do that once or twice a week. And then um, today and a couple times a week, we end with the plate workout. Um, they just grab a plate and, you know, upright rows, bench, and they just don't put the plate down just to work on that muscle endurance. So that, those would be like a typical practice for us. But just like everyone else, I mean, tomorrow, the day before weigh-ins, it's like a funeral in here. You know, guys are flopping around and, you know, can we get an hour out of them, you know? Sure. So a typical practice length would be? Uh, we start at um, 315 and we would be done by like 515, about two hours. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, Coach, talk, uh, you talked a little bit about the strength building concept and we're, we're early on in the year, right? So uh, you just indicated you wrestled your first match, first duel. Um, what's your progression series look like? What do you, what do you, when are you trying to peak? How many times a year are you trying to peak? Are there certain events you're trying to get your guys up to? Um, you know, explain that process a little bit. You've had extreme success in winning the team state duels, right? And then the individual tournament, I believe, comes after that. Talk to me a little bit about how you manage that process and what you're looking to peak for and how you guys do peak. Yeah. There's two things we can, and we want to win everything, but we don't talk anymore about conference. I know you guys go to Brexville and I know we're going to, we're going to see you guys RJ at some stuff, but we talk about dual state and IJ state and nothing else. So it almost takes care of itself, but um, you know, we start off the year and, and I told the guys, I know I'm hitting them harder right now than I typically would. And it's because I think this team, one, we have a ton of seniors, but I think this team has a chance to be special. So honestly, most years I'd, I'd be going a little bit slower as far as how intense the drilling is, how often we're running. Um, but I feel like this group can handle it. So we try to peak uh, right after Christmas break. It's like the, the first week of January is dual state. And about three weeks up to that, we just sit down and, and we talk about like, this is something we've talked about for 365 days. And, and I'm probably going to make them, I'm going to make them watch that modern day meet or I'm going to talk to them about what happened and what are we going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. And then we start breaking down uh, 
you know, one of the years at Mishawaka, we were kind of the contender. We lost a modern day at dual state. We won eight weight classes and we lost the duel because we gave up four pens. Mm -hmm. So we start talking like, hey, these are the teams we're worried about. You know, this this is going to be your job. And if you know my best kid, I, I can't have you go out and win three to two. You got to score me bonus. So we start having them practice that. We'll put them in that scenario. Hey, man, this is the crown point kid. We're going to go live and put them right in front of the whole team, score bonus. And the other kid, I, I would pick another kid where I'm going, hey, man, if you can beat them, great, but you can't get pinned. You can't give up bonus. You got to be competitive. Do your job. We talk that all the time. Do your, and your job might be different than next duel. You might go from, you know, the guy trying to stay off his back to like, you're the swing match and we need it. So about three weeks leading up to that, we probably lengthen practice a little bit, definitely pick up the intensity um, and really focus on the dual meet strategy. I love the dual meet stuff. I fought so hard for Indiana. I was so mad when we went away. Don't tell me the best team is determined individual state. It's so stupid. So he's got the best five or six dudes. You know, I pride myself on working with the full lineup and I like the strategy of it. So they'll know when they step on that mat, um, what their job is, what they need to do, whether they're trying to score bonus, whether they're trying to survive. And we just put them in those situations. Um, then after dual state's over, we honestly like take a step back for a couple of weeks that's leading up to our conference. And yeah, we want to win conference, but it's not as important to us as other stuff. So we'll uh, go back to, you know, the two hour practices, maybe a little bit shorter, uh, try to let their bodies heal up, not beat on them so much. And really there, I just, they're focusing on themselves. You know, we're getting ready for our individual tournament run. So sometimes, you know, I might text it to them. Sometimes I type it out and hand them like, these are the things, if you want to accomplish your goal, these are the, you know, try to keep it three things you need to get better at. And they're just focusing on themselves from there. Um, and then honestly, even when we, even when we hit sectional, it's just, you know, for us, it's just, it is what, it, I mean, if you lose at the sectional, like you, you, <laughs> you probably uh, don't have aspirations of, you know, wrestling at the state finals. So for us, our regional is ridiculous. It's by far the toughest regional and, and it's, our regional, I think, is more difficult than definitely one of the semi-states. And, you, I mean, if you look at it, we're, depending on whose rankings you look at, we're top three. Uh, Center Grove's four. Franklin's ranked. Avon's, that's the same freaking regional. It's stupid. So we really, that week, uh, laser in and break down film and come up with our game plans and really hit them hard. I'm big on hitting them hard at the beginning of the week. Like they know when they come in on Monday and Tuesday it is not going to be enjoyable. And I, and I talk to them all the time about being uncomfortable and, you know, you got to break in practice. There's got to be times where that door looks real attractive. So throughout all of this, our hardest practices are Monday, Tuesday. Um, I want to see guys crying. I want to see them throwing up. I want to see them questioning whether they want to be there. But when it's over, like, you know, I always tell them, like, I'm not doing that because I think it's funny or fun. Like, I'm doing that because you're telling me I want to be a state placer. I want to be a state champion. And we got to get to work. So once we hit regional, we'll come in and smash them on Monday, Tuesday, um, lighten up towards the end of the week, um, and then kind of keep that process as we head to state. I mean, the Monday of state, like, there'll be dudes that are thinking about, do I want to wrestle at state or do I want to leave? Like, what, what looks better to me? So that's kind of how we do it. That's awesome stuff. Really good stuff. Um, I just listening to you over the last 20 minutes just sounds like you have a team um, kind of emphasis, you know, whether it was ninth in the conference, seventh in the conference, fifth in the conference, um, having a goal um, that you're going to try to get that team to. And um, just that the, the team feel you can kind of just tell within it, like, how are you getting your guys to buy in to that? You know, talking about saving points getting the major, uh, doing things like that. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I thought I know Mitch is two of the dual state championships and and we're lucky in Michigan because uh, yeah. that's the, that's the premier event, I think at, in our, in our state. Um, so we're lucky with that, but uh, you know, I, I just hear you talking about team and in that culture, like you just speak to maybe how you would instruct a coach on, on building that culture in his program. Um, you know, a couple of things I'll even say individual state, um, and obviously they, they've got their individual goals, but we've taught, I, mean, I told a kid yesterday, like, listen, dude, eighth place, like last year, that doesn't do anything for me. That, and we've got it. I mean, we've got it up. I don't know if you guys can see there up on our, our board is how many points you get at individual state for the team. 
So I talked to him about, he lost a close match in the quarterfinals last year. I'm like, dude, I love you. That costs like 15 points. Like you got to win that man. He's like, I got it coach. I got you. I got, I got everybody's back. So one, I, I would say like, you got to value everyone. And I, I talked to him like last night before our varsity wrestle, we do JV on two mats. I'm like, listen, you're not up in the stands, hanging out with your girlfriend, jump in a corner, talk to these JV guys, high five them when they come off. Like one of our best kids, Nick Cicerelli, he's like, I still remember my freshman year when I was JV. And he's like, I couldn't believe it. I won an overtime against this Avon kid that was supposed to be really good. And he's like, and you came over and like, you knew my name. And then some of the varsity guys came over and we're like, dude, man, that's a good man. You know, the kids rank fourth in the state now. Um, so I think it's valuing everyone. Um, and we talk so much, man, so much is just talking to them, like explaining to them, we're only as good as our weakest link. And, and for us to accomplish our goal, it takes everyone. And it takes those backups, getting those guys ready. Um, so I, I think talking to them about it, valuing it, I don't know, man, we break every day on state champs. And, you know, I, I remember when Brayton Lee was here, I was like, dude, it's awesome. He's going to score us 20, 25 points. That ain't enough. And, and Brayton, you're going to win your state titles. And Brayton will tell you, man, he's like, he only wrestled to try to help us win a state title. So I, I think it's just talking to him about it. Um, you know, you got your individual goal and that's awesome. But now add into it, you're wrestling at a team that every, and that's what I tell my guys, we're the only team that's in the conversation every year. You know, Cathedral was for a little while. They're not this year. Warren Central was for, they're not this year. Crown Point used to not be, they are. Modern Day took a couple of years off. Brownsburg every year is in the conversation. Now I'm getting sick and tired of being in the conversation and not getting it done. Um, but that's something we pride ourselves on, man. We want to be the best program in the building. We want to represent the best of Brownsburg. And it just, I don't know. I, I don't know how else to say it other than just talking to them about it and knowing your role. And do, and they they do, man. Our, our guys love the dual meets. And even when they, you know, our heavyweight last night's first match, he wrestled the number two ranked kid. We're number one. It goes into overtime. And I, I honestly, I didn't think we looked great. And he's he sent me a text. And he's like, I'm getting bonus at, at state, coach. Don't worry. I, he's like, I, I got you. He's like, I just... It's only had 10 practices after football. He's like, I know you need bonus. Cause I told him this year, I was like, dude, don't go out and win three to two. Like that doesn't do me any good. You're 12th in the country. You got to score me bonus. So I just think that I just love that part of it. I've, I've never understood the coaches that just want to work with their five best. What did I ever do for Brayton Lee? Other than go to his house, sit down with his dad and beg him not to leave. <laughs> I mean, uh, other than that, like that kid was a hammer coming. He was always going to win multiple state titles. I like, Nick Cicerelli, who's gone from JV to ticket round to ticket round because of Indiana's stupid draws, and we got screwed last year, to the dudes ranked fourth in state, and people are like, oh, who's that? I'm like, he's really good. We lost by a point to a placer in the regional, and, of course, drew the dude that got fourth, and he beat us by a point at semi-state. Like, uh, I take a lot of pride in those guys, man. So, uh, yeah. That's well, awesome. Can, yeah. Yeah. You can tell you have a, a great energy to you. Very, very intense uh, as a coach. And you can see why you built such a successful culture and program um, down at Brownsburg. So, you know, just thank you for joining us. And RJ, you have any other questions? No, I don't think I have any questions. I'm looking forward to seeing you. I think, are you guys at the GGI? Uh, we've got yeah, Grappler Gold. We're Grappler Gold. Are you guys, you guys Crown going point. to that car hand Crown Point tournament too? Yeah, so I'll see you the very first three weeks of the year. We'll be at the same place. So awesome! Yeah, we, I saw. I just noticed we get to see Davidson three times. It's like, oh, it's awesome, man. Yeah, we did our scheduling. <laughs> yeah, I know. Awesome. I kind of thought that after looking at it too. So looking forward to it, Derek. Yeah, sounds good, guys. Take care. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.